Hello, everybody, and welcome back. If it's your first time watching, welcome and um, happy Sunday to everybody. I hope everyone is well and happy and safe and um, doing okay. Um, so uh, let's start with a quick recap on what I asked you to do last time. So last time it was about uh, drawing with uh, pens, with markers. So I went through that a little bit. I think I watched that back and I was taking, <laughs> I really looked like I love pens, right? Because most of that video was just spent talking about markers and pens. So I'm sorry for that. I should have done a bit more drawing and a bit less waffling. Um, and I also tried to be way too ambitious to try and get the technology to work. So today I'm gonna to be a little bit more calm. Um, I planned it again, um, but hopefully it's gonna be a little bit less problematic than last time. But you know, I'd rather try something and it doesn't go quite right and uh, I can learn from my mistakes, which is uh, always what I'm trying to say to people. So I should take some of my own advice on board. So hopefully today will go a little bit easier and a little bit better. So yes, a recap, I was getting you to think about pens and paper and the mark that you make on the paper. So thinking about the width, uh, the thickness of the line in relation to the sheet of paper. And I got some brilliant, brilliant um, tiny shoes back and I'm gonna share some of those with you right now. Um, I realized that uh, that was kind of quite a strange, um, a little bit garbled probably uh, exercise to do, um, but uh, I thought it made sense at the time. And um, yeah, let's see if this works. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for sending those in. Um, so here are some really, really good examples um, from Claire and from Joe and Bev and Amanda and Laura. So if we look at these, uh, I really love this one where, um, I think this was from Claire. She managed to, each time she uh, drew the shoe, she managed to photograph it with the marker that she'd used to draw the shoe. So that one looks really good. And uh, I really love these little bits here. You know that thing when a marker pen hits the page and you don't move quick enough and you get that bleed. I really love those spots. And I think that's such a free, beautiful drawing of a shoe. I really, really like this. This one is fantastic. So it's the same shoe and it was shown um, from the large one from the A4 right the way down to this little tiny teeny one there. So obviously there's different colors here, there's different line weights. And um, I really love seeing this progression of all these different shoes uh, sizes going right down to this small one here. And here are some more. Again, people are experimenting with turning the shoe round in different ways um, and different colors, as you can see in those two bottom examples. And um, this one is not quite so well organized here, but you can just see here and here, there are some of those tiny shoes. So yeah, I really, really love seeing those. Thank you very much for sending me those in. And um, even if that didn't go very well, don't worry about it and you can try it again. And I love, love any suggestion that you can send me um, either on uh, Instagram, my name there is I am Pascal Hansen or on Twitter, uh, also I am Pascal Hansen. Um, or you can even comment here in the live comment section or um, after the video has aired, you can send me some suggestions in the comment section. Um, something also that I realized is that somebody sent me something and was like, "These look at these horrible, ugly, terrible shoes that I've drawn. And that really broke my heart a little bit because they had made the effort to do the challenge and to photograph them and to send them to me and then were putting themselves down even before I'd looked at them. So just try and not do that. It never really has a good outcome. Um, I really appreciate you sending me those. So please don't do yourself down because we just get into a conversation where you go, oh, look, here's the terrible art that I've done. And then I say, no, 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 it's not terrible. And you go, yeah, yeah, it is. And you know, it never ends well. That. So just um, if you want to show your artwork to people, you know, never ever apologize because um, it's always better than not doing something. That's what I think, okay? So again, thank you very much. So today we're gonna to talk about color, which I'm really excited for. And uh, I guess this tutorial is aimed a little bit more at families, households, 
Um, there are going to be two challenges here. Um, one kind of easy thing, which you can do together as a family or with your kids, or just kind of send your kids off to do really. Um, and another one for um, people who want to get to grips a little bit more with paint and palette and color mixing. So those are the two things that we're going to be working on today. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is color palette. So that's something very important to any artist, any designer actually, even if you're designing a fashion collection, a building, um, or just thinking about what kind of palette and colors you're gonna use on your canvas. Really, really important thing to get a grip of. And again, it's a little bit like I was saying the other day about having a set of rules. And a color palette is a set of rules. It's a, it's a bracket of colors, which hopefully will um, allow you not to kind of get too fussy and uh, overthinking the colors that you use. So really a color palette is a limited often um, range of colors from which you can look at the world, translate the world through just those colors. So we hear about Picasso's rose period or his blue period. And really what that refers to is the palette. So we know that pink and rose colors are kind of maybe have got an alignment to something a little bit more happy and blue period maybe a little bit more melancholy but it's just a range right it's a range of colors which the artist has decided that's how the the artwork is going to be um going to be represented going to be painted within so the world might be multicolored, but the palette range is just limited. And I think why that's good is because we can paint with millions and millions of colors. And when you've got all that choice, I think sometimes it can be really difficult to actually make the right choice. So that's really why we use a color palette and have a rule about what colors are inside the color palette and what colors are outside of the color palette. And there's a really, really easy way to do that. And um, this is the first challenge. I think, when you limit your choices, you become much more inventive with using them. So that's the really the first thing that I want to say. The second thing is, I guess everybody is really missing going out and looking at stuff. And I always think of Sunday as museum day. It's the day my parents always used to try and take me somewhere interesting to see stuff. So the challenge today is a little bit about uh, museums and curation, curation and choosing things. So. I want to show you my museum. I'm gonna just unplug my laptop. Yes, the green top, exactly. So if I come over here, I'm going to show you my museum. I've made a museum of green things. So I went around my house this morning and I tried to find everything I could that was green. Every single object, natural things, artificial things, all different types of objects, okay? So that's my museum of green. And you're very welcome to my museum. But it's also why, where, why I am wearing a green top. So yes, well done. I'm just going to plug this back in again so I can just show you. I took a better picture of the museum. Um, so hopefully you can see that picture a little bit better. So this was the first time I got all the objects together. So I had a tabletop and I collected about 45 objects that were green and I just laid them out on a table. Uh, I think that's called a flat lay. Um, I've seen that used, uh, but I didn't really have any type of um, thoughts about how I would arrange things. And I just started thinking about, okay, I want to, just collect green things and I'm going to put them on the table and see what happens. So you can do this with any size table and you can do it with any color, but I think probably color because that's today's theme is a really good place to start. You could do it with circular objects. You can do it with furry things. You can do it with natural things. It, it doesn't really matter what rule you, you set, but I think a really easy way to do this, especially for kids is to send them off now and find as many things as they can of a certain color and then group them all together. Unless you have got some extreme OCD where your house is arranged by color, um, certainly mine isn't, um, you're gonna have to hunt everywhere to try and find stuff around your house. As I was saying before, I always want to have something with these art classes where you don't need to go outside, you can just work with what you've got at home. So I chose the color green and I'll explain why in a minute. 
Um, but that, yeah, that was the first image that I uh, took of my first arrangement. Then I started thinking a little bit more and I thought, okay, well, I'm going to arrange these objects uh, in a little bit. I'm going to be a bit more thoughtful about how I arrange them. So over, over here on the left-hand side are all the circular, cylindrical and round objects. And then they move into objects which have got maybe rounded corners or rectangles to squares to more rectangles. There are some, I guess there's some pens there, a knife, um, a bag closure, a toothbrush and a fork and a vacuum cleaner and a comb. And they all kind of fit into rectangles, right? And then these objects, the gloves, the bag and the underpants, um, don't really fit into any kind of shape. So that was the next one I did. And I thought I could still do a bit better. So I did this one, which was arranging the, can you guess what this is? I'm arranging the green objects from big to small. Okay, so that's the, the rule. Um, I've got the rule about green objects. And then I, I thought about the arrangement rule being um, big on the left-hand side, and then the smallest object, which is that one, the Lego brick on the right-hand side. And I still thought I could do a bit better. So I did this one. So can you see what the arrangement is there? Any guesses? So what I thought about doing there is arranging by color. So thinking about pale greens on this side and then darker greens on this side. And I, for me, that was the most satisfactory conclusion of those, of those objects. I think you can do this with as many objects as you can. Um, you don't have to do it with 50 objects like I did. You could probably do it with far, far fewer and on a much smaller uh, table, but you can do it on your kitchen worktop. You can do it on a little table. You can do it on your dining table. But the challenge today is to make a museum, invite people to your museum and try and arrange everything in a really, really beautiful way. When you go to a museum, um, doesn't matter if it's an art museum or if it's a historical museum, I'm always really super impressed about how the curators lay out everything. So everything's like very, very nicely spaced and they take great care to organize things. And uh, I realized that there was quite a big difference between this one, which was the last one that I did, and that first one. Um, yeah, first one here, you know, this kind of not, the spaces around here are not very nice. Things are a bit kind of wonky. Uh, there's stuff that's overlapping, things like that. And I thought by the end of it, I'd made a bit of a better job. So once you get everything together, think about how you're going to arrange it, what your rule's gonna be. And then when you arrange it, really think carefully and really try hard to make maybe the spaces very even um, next to everything. So if you look on here, I tried to keep a really similar gap around the edge of everything. And I've got lots of different things here from um, natural color greens to printed green, to green that's almost blue, um, to artificial colors, natural colors, different textures, different shapes, um, and uh, different types of object. Okay, so I uh, hopefully that will inspire you a little bit to um, have a go at thinking about what museum you might make to do with color today. So that's the, uh, that's the first challenge. I'm just gonna read some comments, see what people are saying. Yes, I'm sure you do have lots of shoes to put away. I think um, that's the thing. You kind of uh, get all this stuff out and then you have to put it away. And I know that's um, something always that parents are trying to get their kids to do is, is clear up after themselves. But I feel like there's some justification here. We can't go out to a museum and we're gonna make a really beautiful museum here with um, what you have. So try and get stuff out, but yes, please put it away afterwards. Okay, so that is the first part. The other tip that I have for this is to, once you have your objects, to remove something. Because I think there were certain objects that I put into my collection, which, yeah, they were kind of, I was pushing it a little bit in terms of choice. So a really good idea, I think, is if you've got about 40 objects, 
probably take two away. If you've got 20 objects, choose which one you're going to remove. Um, if I show you a couple of objects, which I thought about a little bit, I reckon the balloon pump from last week, that was causing me a bit of concern, mainly because of that pink part there, less the black, but I think the pink really stands out. So probably if I had to take another item away, it might be that one. Um, because, yeah, it doesn't really, it doesn't really fit the rule, okay? So you can have a little bit of fun with choosing what you put in and what you take away. Okay, so I've got a theory about green. And my theory about green is because we see it everywhere, we see it in nature, a lot of the colors that we paint with end up being quite artificial. And also many things that are made in green, whether it's this sweater or whether it's a pan scourer, I never really, I, I always just think that the color of them just doesn't look like the green we see outside, whether it's grass, whether it's a pine tree, um, or whether it's just the leaf. Um, there's, I th I've just kind of got this little pet theory about the color green that it's, um, because we see it so much in nature, it's really, really difficult to replicate. Um, but I'm gonna have a go, and um, I'm gonna try and do um, a setup here where I talk a little bit about color and mixing color. And I am going to use an apple. Okay, so a beautiful green apple there, which is going to be my subject for today. Now, I'll see if I can get this to work. I didn't have much success last time with it. It's really difficult to get it to work. You just have to bear with me a sec with that. And let's see if we can. Put the cable in and you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so let me just check that's working. Yeah, that's not too bad. Let's just get that in, in frame better. Okay, perfect. Okay, right. So what are you going to need for this? Uh, probably I do this after the live session. Uh, the way I'd like you to work is get a small piece of paper like this, which is a five, and get some scissors and cut some little strips like this. Make this little fringe, okay? So they're going to be your test strips, and you'll see what I'm going to do with those in a little in a little while. Um, and I'm going to use some acrylic paint. I'm not going to be using the uh, the iPad, so I can put that away. And what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and mix the correct color of this apple, and. I'm going to show you a way of doing it, which I think works really well. It's about accuracy. And I think once you get really good at mixing colors, um, you get much faster at it and you can be much more intuitive with your use. But I do think you need to start with some basics. And uh, this is a basic tutorial just about trying to mix the right color. Um, somewhere, and I don't know where I've put it now, is my brush. Just bear with me, oh, I can see it's over there. Hold on, I will get the brush. I think I'm all really well prepared and then there's always something that I haven't got quite right. Okay, so um, I'm gonna be using some yellow, some green from the tube, some white, uh, some burnt umber and some ultramarine. So let's go straight to the phone screen and I will start to put those down. So there's the blue. And you'll see what I do when I start mixing it. Hopefully that's a good view to, for you to see. I'm only putting a little bit down, right? Not huge amounts of paint. Paint's expensive. And especially when you're just doing an exercise like this, it's just good to put a bit more yellow. Um, it's good to just um, use a little bit, see how you go first of all. Some burnt umber. The burnt umber is brown. It's a cold brown colour. And then I'm also going to be using some 
Right. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to tear off one of those strips because that's going to be my test strip. And I think you'll see what I do. So um, let me get a little bit of water. And I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to mix some, some green and some white together because it's a pale green color, right? The, the apple. And you'll see what happens when I put that on the, on the stripe there and I hold it up to the, uh, to the apple. It's no good at all. Um, it looks very artificial and uh, it's not a good color match at all. So something needs to change. Let me get those of these taken off. So I can use them. Right, so I think what needs to happen there is I need to maybe add some yellow. So if I add some yellow into it, that's looking better already. Can you see? It's not too bad. But I don't think there's enough colour. There's a little bit, it's gone a bit wishy-washy. I think it needs to be a bit darker. So if I add a bit of brown to that, maybe that will modify the colour of the swatch. So the reason why I've done this workshop like this with these little swatches is if you have if you have, oh, it's getting pretty good. If you're getting, if you're mixing up paint on a palette or a canvas, it's quite difficult to hold up um, what you're doing to the actual subject. And I think this is a really, really good way of starting that by being able to mix a color and then check it against the subject to find out how accurate it is. So I think with that last one, there wasn't enough color there. Um, there wasn't quite enough going on. Yeah, you can see there, it's, it's not quite right, is it? I think it needs more color density. It needs more yellow. Maybe a little bit more brown. I'm always trying to keep this pool of color as small as possible. Um, try not to spread it around too much across the palette because you'll just, just um, waste paint really. What's going on here? That's not too bad. It's quite difficult for me to see in the um or is it frozen? Let's stop that a sec. Sorry, I think it froze. Um, that's not too bad. Um, I think the paint has gone a little bit watery now. Maybe I shouldn't have added so much water at the beginning. Um, I think it's still looking a little bit artificial, so I'm going to add some brown to it. And I'm going to add some white. And the white is going to do two things. It's going to lighten it, but it's also going to make the paint go more opaque. And um, by opaque, I mean more solid, so less transparent, like watercolour. This is a watercolour paint because it's acrylic. But, oh yeah, look at that. That's looking much better already. Okay, so I think it needs a little bit more. Ooh, I've got to be really careful with this. A little bit more green. A little bit more yellow. So that green colour, you can see it's a really, really artificial green. It's the kind of green that, um, I guess it's like a British racing green, which is actually my least favourite colour. But I think that's something like, you know, you'd see something like a pan scour being made of that. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, so that for me is probably about as close as I'll get. So if I take that away, Put it on the floor. You can see that it took me several goes to get that right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven. There's the apple. Um, I hope that comes out on screen okay. Um, they look maybe fairly similar, but to my eye in daylight, um, there is a little bit of change. There's not so much change between those two, um, actually between those two, but there is a progression there. And you can see from the point where I started, where I just thought, okay, to make light green, I need to add white and green together. Um, um, there needs obviously to be a little bit more happening um, than just that really, really unsophisticated basic uh, idea of just uh, green straight out of the tube. I think you can always really tell um, when uh, an artist has just got paint and it's come straight out of the tube, especially if it's going to be something like a landscape where there's a real, real sophistication of green likely to be in front of you and really, really trying to work with that because um, as I say, green we see in nature all the time. So when we replicate it artificially on canvas with a chemical product like a paint, it's really, really difficult to get it looking authentic and looking natural. But hopefully um, that's a difficult one to start with, um, with a simple object like an apple. So, you know, that's the second challenge. So the first challenge is the museum uh, of colour. And then the second challenge is to have a go at colour mixing and try and just for your own satisfaction and your own practice, see if you can mix colors together. Normally you use uh, two yellows, a warm yellow and a cool yellow, two reds, a warm and a cool red, and two blues, a warm and a cool blue, and then white. And you can make pretty much any color from that. Um, but um, yeah, that acrylic art set didn't have two of each. It had in total, how many are there? There's six colors in total. So the one, the one that I didn't use was the red because um, I didn't figure that I need that, but really just experiment a little bit. See what you need to do when you hold that swatch up to the, um, to the object. See what you need to do to allow you to modify the color. Um, I think I've got quite a good eye with colour. I think some people have got a much better eye when it comes to colour. Um, but this exercise is about accuracy and just trying to um, match something by being able to lay your mixed colour side by side to the object. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed that and um, you're enjoying your Sunday. If there are any questions in the comment section then please I'll stay here for another three minutes so please ask me any questions that you want to about anything that I've covered today but hopefully that was okay um I think that's everything so yes I think it works a bit easier when I don't try to be so ambitious I'll see you again on Tuesday and I haven't quite decided what we're going to work on on Tuesday um what suggestions have I got we might go back to portraiture, actually. I've got an idea for uh, likeness and portraiture, but um, I'll have a think based on uh, how I'm feeling, what my resources are, and um, what uh, feedback I get from you. So remember, you can ask me anything that you want to know in terms of what you'd like a tutorial on, what you'd like to discuss, um, and hopefully this was something that you want to get involved with. So please um, share it as much as you can, and let your friends know if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel. There's also lots more on the channel that um, I did a couple of years ago when Big Painting Challenge started, just trying to uh, think more clearly about some things like uh, proportion and um, perspective and things like that. Um, oh, foreshortening is another one that I'm gonna, ha gonna have a go at. So I will see you on Tuesday. <laughs>